What impact does wireless radiation and 5G have on animals, insects, and the environment? Do I need to care about this? Does it have any impact on me? Well, if our bees go, then we go. And we're all connected. I mean, uh, the trees, the forests, there's a body of literature showing impacts to trees, for example. There was a nine-year field study done in two cities in Europe where they looked at antennas near and far from trees and found damage on the sides of the trees facing the antenna. They also did measurements on that. There's um, research showing chemical changes in plants and changes in their growth, changes in bacteria growth as well, which is really important to look at uh, bacteria in soil. What is that going to mean? What will that mean for our crops? Um, in terms of animals, there's a, my goodness, uh, in, in Environmental Health Trust, we have all, we have like pages on bees, research on bees, research on uh, birds, research on trees. So let's take bees. Um, there's research looking at the frequencies that 5G will use, the higher frequencies that we're going to be adding into the mix we have now. And they find that the absorption is over 300 times as much into bees when the frequency gets higher. And the researchers state their warning that this can impact their physiology and their behavior. There's research that's looked at bees and they've shown changes in honey production. So um, there's no lack of studies showing impacts to wildlife. What there is, is a lack of any comprehensive uh, review to protect the environment. There's other issues too with the rollout that, you know, we could talk forever on, which is what about the energy consumption from all of these devices? How will that impact our world? Um, how about the e-waste that's being created by billions of new devices for the 5G and the Internet of Things? What about the pollution that happens when we discard the phone? You know, all of these devices are made to be thrown away. They're not made to last long. Uh, and then where do they go? Do we recycle them? If we quote unquote recycle them, most of them are going to uh, families in other countries where they're taking apart these devices to, to retrieve the, the valuable minerals in them. And they're being poisoned. Uh, in the process from lead, from the toxic chemicals. The workers who are making the phones are using toxic chemicals to create the phones. The raw minerals are being mined by children in, in countries where it's fueling wars, conflict minerals. So at every, at every stage of the life cycle of a wireless device and a cell phone, there is pollution and abuse, abuses of human rights and the environment. And so we have to really rethink technology and start looking into things that last longer. How do we ensure that there's good worker conditions? How do we um, have it so it's safe without wireless antennas? I want to be able to go anywhere in this room with something that looks like a phone, but I don't even need to use a wireless antenna. I mean, they can do that. You put it on airplane mode with all the antennas off, it's, a, it's still an incredible machine. And then I can just, why can't I just plug it in wherever I go? I can get my emails, send out emails that I drafted. There are solutions to this problem. It's not like there's, we're stuck. We're not stuck. It feels like we're stuck, but we might not be able to see the other side of the mountain, but I can definitely see the path forward. And it's happening. It has to happen. We have to make these changes because our current use of technology is not sustainable. You recently said that when you have a phone in your pocket, it's a two-way microwave radio. Uh, tell me more about that. Also, um, a phone is emitting microwave radiation all the time, whether you're using it or not, to the tower or to the Wi-Fi if it's connected to that. Or if it has Bluetooth, the Bluetooth is always going out, checking in and out. Um, your regular radios from decades ago were just receivers. There was a, a radio tower. It sent out a signal. 
the radios received it. They are not creating exposures, the radios of the past. But a cell phone is very different because there's all this data going back and forth. Most people don't know, like when women put it in their bras or you put it in your pants, the apps are always uploading information, notifications are always coming in. Every time there's something happening on your phone, it's generally happening with radio frequency radiation. And it's invisible, so you can't see it. And it's easy to ignore <laughs> if you uh, want to, which we all do, I think. So that's why we're working to raise, to elevate this issue and get the conversation going. What has the most recent large-scale studies on wireless radiation's effect on human health determined? Were the findings widely shared with the public and the media? Well, there have been a number of really important studies, but probably the biggest one was an animal study done by the U.S. government. It was um, $30 million dollars designed decades ago because the FDA said we don't know what long-term impacts to humans could be. We really need to have an animal study to find out, large-scale animal study, because of course it would be, you know, you can't test on people. Um, so they took hundreds of rats and mice, they exposed them to cell phone radiation for most of their life, not all. And they found clear evidence of cancer in the male rats. And they found uh, brain cancers, as well as a, a tumor of the nerve sheath of the heart. And they found um, DNA damage in both the mice and the rats after only 14 weeks of exposure. And the media publicized it as they had these findings. But what does it mean for humans? It doesn't really even mean anything for humans because the, the FDA then said, we reject the findings of the NIH National Toxicology Program. And that's where we are. We had this huge study. I've only funded a few studies in the United States, two. Both of them have found effects. And this was the $30 million uh, study. So there are industry-funded scientists industry-funded PR groups, and they work very hard to get out their message that uh, safety, there's no proof that there's harm. The study was an animal study, um, criticizing the study in all kinds of ways. And this just goes on and on. It's being played out in media everywhere. I mean, media is owned, if you think about it, how do, how do newspapers and media get a lot of their money from, from ads. And who are some of the biggest advertising uh, money? Where, where do those come from? It comes from telecom, big tech. So here we are. That's why a lot of the work that's being done on this issue is really grassroots. People photocopying information, having meetings, sharing information that you wouldn't get otherwise. And that's why I'm so thankful for the information that you're sharing. You know, there's, I actually, I'm going to talk about this in my talk, but uh, telecom and big tech have far more lobbying dollars than the pharmaceutical companies. We're talking about an industry that um, it's too big to fail. And every day they get to sell their product. It doesn't matter if it's shown to be harmful later. They'll get bailed out. Every day they are making millions of dollars. So it's worth it to just push it as far as they can, just like they did with lead, asbestos, you know, every other uh, toxic exposure. It's the same story. <laughs>